Hello everyone, I am Erika of the storytellingjeweler.com and you are watching our weekly No One Has To Be The Lone live video to make sure that no beater has to be the lone even if we are uh, sitting in different parts of the world, everyone at their own beading tables. So please let me know if you can hear me, please let me know if you can see me. Hello, Petra. I already see about 20 beaders joining. Honey, Sarah. Hello, everyone. So can you please confirm to me in a comment that you can hear me, you can see me. Donna, Reinhilda, Kathy. And Donna is saying that she can hear me and see me. So I'm glad that everything is all right. And thank you very much for the welcome back messages. As most of you probably know, then we took a little vacation last week and uh, that's why we didn't have a week, a week ago the No One Has To Be The Long Session. And together with Adam, we were biking around the Netherlands and Belgium. It was an awesome, awesome, awesome bike trip through through different cities sometimes in sunshine sometimes in rain so you can see here is the sunshine part this is a picture from the mass river and then here this picture with turtle estefan well this is more on the rainy side <laughs> and i really wanted to show you this picture from the inside, from the interior of the Antwerp train station. And I think as for beaders, it might be really inspiring. I love the details and I love the metal work and the glass decorations and everything about this. <laughs> and in the meanwhile, Louise, Petra, Heike, Alice, Daphne, Anita, Nicoline, Bernadette, welcome ladies. Hi, Drone. I hope you are all all right. And I'm very curious, how did you spend your last Friday instead of no one has to be alone? Sharon, hello. I missed you too, ladies. It has been about a week and a half that we saw each other for the last time during coffee time with Erica, but it seemed really long. <laughs> and Hello. So, I already uploaded uh, the tutorial, the printable file for you for today's lesson. So, if you want, then if you want to download it, then please copy the link, uh, the storytelling jeweler.com slash no one has to be the lawn slash into your browser window and then you can make your choice as usual that if you uh, would like to download the file for free and in this case this is my support to you if you are going through hard times because of corona and otherwise you can also i really appreciate if you decide to support the broadcast and buy the printable file for five euros and in the middle all nicoline says i was very sad missed you so much you're so sweet nicoline i missed you too guys i actually had beads with me and i didn't even have time to bead i was thinking about many of you all of you especially our belgian and dutch beaders because as we were biking through the country countries then many times i saw signs for cities which I know that uh, some of you live in, Teal for Anneline, for example. I saw Nijmegen, and then I was thinking of you. <laughs> so it's really nice to be back with you. And, oh, I'm sorry, I will silence my phone. Someone is organizing a boat trip from for tomorrow. <laughs> so, 
And if you have a minute, then I would really like to ask you that please share this, share the news with your friends that what's going on here, or write a review at thestorytellingjeweler.com, leave a comment, whatever. I really appreciate every kind of feedback and every kind of help spreading the news that no one has to be alone. We also have new beaters here, Rubar. Sharon Teresi from Buffalo. Anita is here too. Annalene is asking if I was in Teal. I was not exactly in Teal. We tried to actually like not bike through cities, but I saw the sign besides the bike road towards Teal. And then I was thinking of you. <laughs> Zuzi is with me. Oh, Aniko. And Zuzi is with us also. Welcome, ladies. So what's happening today? Today we are going to uh, going to uh, talk a bit about our contest, also about the news Petra is mentioning. And then we will be bidding the Cobblestone Road bracelet. Oh, and Joanna is here, and Catalin, Marion, Maria, and Joanna, I want to wish you a little bit belated happy birthday. Joanna was celebrating a couple of days ago, and I wanted to mention something because Joanna, as you know, probably then because of the uh, because of COVID. Not everything is working as we are used to it normally. And that includes also the shipping services. Uh, we are closely monitoring every, every shipment what's traveling to you. And luckily, like they are safe. It just seems that they travel a lot longer than usually. And Joanna was the one who was waiting for her uh, parcel for the longest time, already from April. I, I think that it was just stuck in a container, which was pushed probably into a back row in a, a warehouse because even shipments uh, sent a lot later than that already arrived in the same country as Joanna lives. And finally, Joanna got her shipment, got her package on her birthday. Can you imagine? <laughs> what a coincidence. And I'm so happy that it's finally with you, Joanna. Janice is with us also, and Malka and Sylvia, Chilla, and welcome, ladies. And by the way, talking about shipments, I wanted to uh, wanted to mention that from the last week, uh, because of the current situation, we decided to add new shipping options to the eShop. So from now on, you will be able to decide if you are a more patient bidder, but then you uh, pay a lot, lot, lot less for shipment, for shipping. Uh, actually, Shipping is on us in this case, about 75 euros. Or if you would like to get your package as soon as possible, then there is a uh, more expensive, but a lot faster shipping option through different courier companies, depending on, your, on the country you live in. And as the value of the order raises, then we try to uh, take off the burden of the price of the shipment as much as possible. So gradually we are taking over more and more of the price of the package. And John is saying 86 days. It was a beautiful birthday surprise. I'm so happy that it's with you finally, Joanna. We were thinking about you so much with Yvette. She is, she is the one responsible for shipping and she's tracking the packages like day by day. <laughs> by the way, I experienced something uh, very similar as a little just after starting the no one has to be the long videos, I ordered a webcam so I can show you, I actually, I can actually show you how I work with the beads. And I ordered two webcams from two different companies to make sure that one of them arrives. 
However, for months, nothing was happening. And at the end, after four months, a third company delivered what I ordered. So today is the big premiere and we will test how does it work. And I will do my best to also show you my hands while reading with you the bracelet. And... Oh, Corinna says, Tikva is my friend, one of the new leaders he, who is with us here. She joined our great group. I am really happy. And welcome, Tikva. We are happy to have you here. And Annalyn says, next time I join you when you are in the neighborhood, okay? That would be awesome, Annalyn. I will for sure let you know if we bike around Teal again. So... Yeah, and some of you are still... Okay, Alice is waiting for a long time. Uh, Alice, please get in touch with Yvette at orders at thestorytellingjeweler.com and she will help you with the shipping, okay? And Joanna says, Yvette Godard is fantastic. She never forgot we were keeping in contact the whole time. We are doing our best and we are always trying to keep you in the loop and we are calling the postal services regularly. I think by now they know us very well. But yeah, that's something what unfortunately we can't change, but we are trying to like ensure that you have now different options for shipping and I can make sure that no one will suffer any damage uh, because of the packages, uh, we are responsible for everything. And in the meanwhile, Teresa joined us and Deb, thank you so much, ladies. Before we start beading, I would like to indeed mention the first storytelling beading contest supported by Matubo Beads and Bead and Button Magazine. And indeed, as Petra mentioned, unfortunately, a couple of days ago, uh, we got some very bad news from Bead and Button. And it seems that both the magazine and the Bead and Button show which were held 90 times and the magazine was with us for 25 years because of the COVID crisis, they will cease to exist. And I'm, I'm absolutely heartbroken about this news and I still can't believe. And yeah, I am very grateful for everything what Bead and Button was doing for us beaders and what Bead and Button is still doing for us and they are doing their best until the very last, including sponsoring our contest. So please, if you have a minute afterward, then please tell them a huge thank you for everything what they have done and remember them and buy the remaining issues at your beach shops and at your, at your bookstores while they are still available. On a happier note, I would like to encourage you to please participate in the storytelling beading contest. And yeah, there, are, there is still some time to enter the, enter the three different categories. And we are really, really, really looking forward for getting your, getting your submissions. And... One more thing before we start beading. Again, we have a weekly special deal and the weekly special deal was chosen by the members of the Storytelling Beading Club. And thanks to the votes, you can enjoy 15% discount for all the art quality L2 Studio cabochons. The discount is applied uh, automatically. You don't need to enter any kind of, kinds of coupon codes. Just visit the storytellingjeweler.com and you can enjoy the discount. 
and Sherry is with us also, and Colleen and Donna. Welcome, ladies. And shall we get to our beading? Are you prepared? Do you already have your beads? I hope so. I decided to bead a new color combination today. And we can start working on it soon. And a bit back to bead and button. Donna is saying, yes, I wish they would at least keep doing digital issues. That would have been a wonderful thing. But I'm sure that they, that they uh, thought about all the possibilities. And I think they were, they, they were just forced to make this sad decision. Judy says, I too am heartbroken. Bead and button has always been my go-to for inspiration. Dandy, I am very sad also. Actually, I would like to dedicate the next uh, Coffee Time with Erica on next Tuesday to Bead and Button magazine. So then, and the, and the Bead and Button show. So then we, we will be able to talk about our memories and everything we can be thankful for what they, what they, what they did for us. And Sharon is saying, I'm tuning it in, but working on a competition piece. Time is running out and so much more to do. Still, thank you so much, Sharon, for joining us. And this is a perfectly good option. Uh, there is a team here during no one has to be the one. But if you have a work in progress uh, project or yes, indeed, something what you have to finish on time, then work on your own thing and just enjoy the company together with us. So today we are going to work on the cobblestone road bracelet. And thank you so much for the name to the club members. There were two uh, votes actually going on while I was not here. One voting for the special deal of the week and another voting for the name of this bracelet. And I think you guys chose a very fitting name. And let's go quickly over the, over the material list to make sure that we have everything what we need for it. First of all, we will need four millimeter round pearls, then the blue ones on the picture, then we will need three millimeter fire polished beads, the golden ones in the middle of the bracelet, then we will need number 15 and number 11 round seed beads Miyuki. I used two colors for this first version, but actually I will uh, do my second version with only one color of number 15 seed beads and one color of number 11 seed beads because I'm curious that how will it look like. Maybe good, maybe not, but it's always worth to experiment, I think. And besides that, we will also need some number 11 Delica beads and a clasp, of course. Uh, it is a design which can be made even wider if you like a statement bracelet. Then after you finish one bracelet, then you can actually bead one more with or without a clasp, depending if you want like one or two clasps on your bracelet. And then you can join the two sequences to each other through the number 11 round seed beads at the tips of these little motifs. Or if you have a lot of leftover four millimeter round beads, then you can make it really fun if you alternate between the different colors. For example, you can do it absolutely randomly or you can make like pairs of beads the same. It's completely up to you. So, how are you doing, ladies? Can we start working on the cobblestone, uh, cobbles, cobble tile, cobble tiles road, <gasps> cobblestone road, <laughs> cobblestone road <laughs> bracelet? I hope so. And now the big reveal is coming. This is my bead mat. 
So, and today you will be able to also see my hands and how I am working. I hope it will help. And let's find a good configuration for the. Yes. So please let me know how does it work for you, if you like this setting, if you can still follow, or if I should change something. Since this is the first time I am showing my hands, then it is indeed like also a little bit of experimentation. And I am absolutely open to get feedback and improve if I can. Sarah said she already started. Go back, Sarah. You will have to cut it apart so we can do it like really like together. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> so, Sherry, Anna, Reinhilde, you are also ready. So let's begin. Connie says, I sound like in space. Do I? <laughs> Okay, then it might be, Tanya also says that there is something with the sound, so there is room for improvement, it, think, it, it seems. Okay, I see, I see. I have two microphones. I'm sorry about that. I will try to mute one. Just a moment. Let's see. Adam? I tried to call some technical assistance, but it seems I was left alone in the meanwhile. When Adam returns, then I will ask him to help me with the with this sound. So, we can start working with number 15 seed beads. And I will pick up four pieces of number 15 seed beads. And I bead one more time through the first, which I picked up. So I join the four beads into a little square yeah kind of a square and as always i like to leave about 10 to 12 centimeters of a tail which i will secure and trim later so after i joined my four beads into a little square I will pick up four more and I will fill in four number 15 seed beads between the ones already added And after I add the last number 15 seed bead, then I bead through one number 15 from the original four. And I also bead through the first one, which I added in this step. So now it really becomes, becomes a little a little square. This is how it looks like at the moment. So I have already done step number one and step number two. And I'm glad that you uh, that you find the sound better. I will work on this. And now as I am exiting one of the beads added in step number two, I will continue by picking up a four millimeter round burr and then a number 15 
seed bead. Afterward, I bead back through the four millimeter round pearl and it will be held by this number 15 at the other end. And afterward, I will bead through the number 15, which I was exiting before picking up the pearl in the same direction as before. So this is how it looks like at the moment. Please let me know if this is all right, if you can follow the steps, if it's going well. So already I am done with steps number one, two and three. And now I'm going for step number four. In this case, I will be, uh, I will join the two seed beads on the two sides of the pearls. And in case of Miyuki seed beads, I need six number, six, uh, number 15 seed beads on both sides. And as you can see on the illustration, in this case, in the original pattern, in the original design, I used three plus three. Three from the first color and three from the second color. And you can decide if you want, want to go with two different colors, as I did with the original. This is it. Or if you would like to work only with one color, as I will be working now. So now I am exiting a seed bead picked up in uh, step number two, which is holding the pearl. And now I pick up six more seed beads and I will pass through the number 15 holding the pearl in place. Afterward, I need six more number 15s and I bead through the number 15 from step number two, which is holding the pearl. Sarah says she likes it with the two colors. I think like, as I'm looking at this, I might also like the two color version, but I just had to try how does it look like with only one color. So now I'm hiding step number one and two, and I put up five and six. And in step number five, I bead through the six new seed beads, which I added, the first six. Then I pick up a Miyuki Delica. I pick up a number 11 seed bead, also Miyuki, and I pick up another Miyuki Delica. And now I will bead through the number 15 exactly at the hole of the pearl, but in the opposite direction. I pull my thread and I hope you can see that the two Delica beads and the number 11 seed bead are forming a little triangle at the top of the uh, pearl. And now I will bead through the two Delica beads, but I will skip the round 11 in between. And then I continue through the other six, number 15 seed beads on the side of the pearl. And also through the number 15 under the pearl, holding the pearl. 
So this is how it should look like. Please let me know how is it going. I will wait for you. But in the meanwhile, I will explain what to do next. So after you have added the two decas and the number 11, and you beat back to the center of the, to the middle of the motif, then you will bead to the opposite side of the little square, which we beaded in steps number one and two. And then you need to repeat steps three, four, and five to attach another pearl and also to attach seed beads around it. So Nicolene says that it's going very well. I'm happy to hear that. And Janice needs a bit of explanation. So I guess, Janice, you are asking about step number five, right? In this case, you are exiting the bead which you added in step number two and which is holding the pearl. You bead through six number 15 seed beads and you pick up a delica bead, a number 11 uh, seed bead and another delica bead. You bead in the opposite direction at the number 15 added in step number three and then you bead through the two delica beads one more time. And you continue through six seed beads and also the, six, uh, the number 15 seed bead holding the pearl. And you bead all the way to the opposite side of the little square. So you can repeat steps three, four, and five until your motive looks like uh, on picture number six. And Colleen is asking if I am able to zoom in. And I have to say, I did not discover yet the option. So all I can do is to, to hold up my motive. And let's see if the camera focuses. So Janice, was it uh, was the explanation okay, or do you need some more help? And how are the others doing? How is it going with you? I am now beading up to the other side of the little square, which I beaded in steps number one and two. And then I will start repeating three, four, and five, starting by picking up a pearl and a number 15 seed bead. I can now bead back through the four millimeter pearl. Okay, Janice is okay. I'm happy to hear, hear that. And I bead through the number 15 bead added in step two, which is holding the second pearl in the same direction as before. Now I will pick up one, two, three, four, five, six number 15 seed beads, and I bead through the number 15, which is holding the pearl. I pick up six more number 15s, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I sew through the number 15 at the bottom of the pearl again. So there are now number 15 beads all around the second pearl, 
all together 14 pieces, one at the bottom, one at the top, and six and six on both sides. And now I am repeating step number five. So I bead through the first five number 15 beads added in this step. I pick up a delica, I pick up a number 11 seed bead and another delica. Now I bead through the number 15 at the top of the pearl. In the opposite direction as before. I continue by beading only the delica beads in the original direction and this will make the little triangle pointier and I continue through the six seed beads on the other side of the of the pearl and also through the number 15 at the bottom. So this is what I have at the moment. So it should look like at this moment, a step, num a step number six, that there is a little square in the middle and then two pearls attached to, uh, to the sides of, uh, to two opposite sides of the square. And both of the pearls are decorated with number 15 seed beads all around and also two and two delica beads and a number 11 seed beads in between. Asaria, I will try to solve the zooming in, or actually I can at least try to put my camera, camera lower. Let's see how does it, that work. Let me know if you like this better or if I should put it back where it was. So this is how it looks like at the moment. And please let me know where are you, how, how are you doing, and if I can show you the next step. And if the camera is better now. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> Okay, Asaria says it's better a little bit. And Amy is saying a quick hello. Hello, Amy. Anna says that's better. Okay. Colleen likes it a lot, a lot more. Then I'm very happy about that. It's also not in my face so much as it was before. <laughs> Okay, Kathy says it's okay with her. Nicoline is changing colors. <laughs> so, I will show now the next steps. And now we are going to bead the little connection between the pearl part and the uh, little square in between two pearls. So, what we need to do that we bead all around this little square to get to the opposite side from where the thread is hanging from. So my thread is hanging from this seed bead here and I need to get all the way here to the other corner of the square.
I'm a bit nervous, ladies, as usually. I can hide my shenanigans with the beads. It happens that I'm making mistakes, of course, and <laughs> forgetting something, and I'm just behind sometimes. But now you are watching me so close, it makes me nervous. <laughs> So, I'm in position, and now I will pick up four number 15 seed beads from the first color, if you are working with two colors, and then I will bead through the first new bead one more time. So, I form a little square again, and this square this is identical to the one I made in step number one. And in step nine, uh, I will be adding number 15s in between the four beads added in step number eight, with the exception of the last one, because... Okay, I forgot a step. Just when Sir said that I am doing great. No, I forgot a step. I'm nervous. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so before I will have to I, I will have to pick it out. And I can't pretend it's not it didn't happen. <laughs> yes. Yes, I just realized. I see your comments a little bit uh, well, you actually see me a little bit later because there is a delay. So, yes, indeed, I forgot about step number seven. We are doing these videos twice a week, already like coffee time with Erika since January. Then no one has to be alone since March. And now I'm again nervous. <laughs> Sorry about that. I used to be very nervous at the beginning, but then it got better, and now it seems that it's back. Okay, I managed to thread my needle, even if you are watching. <laughs> so, when I got in position at one of the empty points, at one of the empty corners of the square, between the two pearls, then I am actually going to pick up a three millimeter fire polished bead and a number 15. And then I bead back through the fire polished bead and I bead through the number 15, which I was crossing before picking up the fire polished bead from the same direction as before. And this fire polished bead will be the connection between the two little squares and the number 15, which is on the opposite side of the fire polished, it will already be part of the next little square. And yeah, thank you so much, ladies, for the encouragement. <laughs> As Amy says, deep breath. <laughs> thank you, Nancy. And after I attached the fire polished bead and the number 15 on, the, on its opposite end, I need to bead through the fire polished bead again. I need to get used to it, showing my hands, beating nicely. <laughs> and then I bead up through the number 15 seed bead, which is holding the fire polished in place. And now I will pick up four pieces of the seed beads, of the number 15 seed beads, just as I have done a moment ago and then I bead one more time through the first one I picked up so I make I form a little square 
And as I said, this little square, this is identical with the one which we beaded in step number one. And you may remember that in step number two, we were adding more seed beads one by one between the already ed between the beads of the little square. So that's what I'm going to do now. I pick up one number 15 seed bead and I bead through the second one in the little square. I pick up one more number 15 seed bead and I bead through the next one in the square. I pick up a third one and I bead through the third in the square. And instead of picking up a fourth new bead, I will bead through the one holding the fire polished. And then I continue until I reach the first one added in this step. So this is how it looks like at the moment. A little square is already made after the fire polished bead. <laughs> and Anne says, it gave a chance to catch up. <laughs> Let's always look at the positive side, right? I really liked it that Kinga, Kinga Nichols, posted a question on her Facebook, uh, Facebook page, I think today or yesterday, asking us, like, what is, what, what came to our lives because of the COVID crisis? What is like, a, what kind of like a positive thing came to our lives, which otherwise would not happen? So... Yeah, and there were lots and lots of answers. And of course, the crisis on its own, it's not a great thing happening. However, we can try to stay positive and that's the way to go forward. And yeah, to look at our mistakes as also an opportunity to, <laughs> to make something nice happening. Not only our mistakes, but also like negative events and now that I'm in position after step number nine at a corner bead facing to the top of my bracelet now I can pick up again a pearl and a number 15 seed bead and then I will bead back through the pearl which will be held by the number 15 seed bead. And then I cross through the number 15 at the bottom of the pearl in the same direction as before. We have done this already. And now we are just repeating and repeating the same pattern over and over again. So now I will pick up six number 15 seed beads, three, four, five, six, and I bead through the number 15 at the top of the pearl. Six more number 15 beads, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I bead through the number 15 at the bottom again. So now I have a full circle of number 15 seed beads around my pearl. Like this. And now I bead up through six number 15s. I pick up a delica, a number 11 seed bead, and another delica. I bead in the opposite direction through the number 15 at the top of the pearl. And I go through the two delica beads in the original direction while skipping the number 11 in between. 
and I continue through the other six seed beads and also through the seed bead at the bottom of the pearl which is part of the little square So this is how it looks like at the moment. How it goes is that we always bead a little square, then we attach and decorate pearls on both sides of the square, on the top and at the bottom. Then we attach a fire polished bead, which is joining two sequences, then we make another little square, we decorate the top, we decorate the bottom with a round pearl and seed beads all around and then so on and so on. And later, as you see on the original, we will be adding number 11s in between, which will make the whole design steady and joining all the pearls to each other. And Jules and Bernadette are saying hello, hello ladies. Happy beading for the rest of the evening. And please ladies who are already working on your bracelets, please let me know how is it going, if you have any questions, if you can follow, etc. Now that I attached a pearl and all the, all the seed beads around, I will bead down to the bottom corner of the square and I will add another pearl and I will decorate it with number 15 seed beads and with some delicas and a number 11 seed bead at the bottom. Katie says, hello, I'm too late due to my cooking, but I love this design and we'll watch the session later. I'm pretty sure you have a, a yummy dinner, Katie, and I am already looking forward to your colors and your design and your bracelet. So now I am exiting a number 15 at the bottom of the little square, I will pick up a pearl and another number 15. And I bead back through the pearl. and I bead through the number 15, holding the pearl. Now I will make the two semicircles out of six and six seed beads. Yeah, and Bernadette is saying, I like that we can actually see your hands. That's indeed a big improvement. This is the first time that I am working with two cameras so i still need to figure out how to do it as good as possible so you can learn as easy as it can be done so i still need to practice with with the webcam and i am very open for any advice but i hope it will it will really help. So I picked up the second sequence of six seed beads now. And when I pull my thread tight, then you can see that I have a full circle of seed beads around my pearl. Now I am beading through the first, sorry, the first six 
see the beads. I pick up a Delica. I pick up a number 11 seed bead and another Delica bead. Now I bead in the opposite direction through the number 15 at the top of the pearl. I pull my thread tight and then I bead through the Miyuki Delica beads. And then I continue through the other six seed beads, decorating my pearl. Also, I bead through the seed bead at the bottom of my pearl. And now my thread is exiting this seed bead at the bottom and I want to get all the way here to this corner of the square so I can continue adding a fire polished bead and then after the, the fire polished bead another little square made of number 15 seed beads so I will bead through all these seed beads. So, what kind of colors are you using for this design, ladies? And I'm very curious to know if you are working with one or two colors of seed beads. Please tell me in a comment. And also, if you have any questions, then don't hesitate to ask. So now you can see that I have two times two, already four pearls attached, in between with a fire polished bead. Now I will pick up a fire polished bead on order number 15. And I bead back through the fire polished bead towards the part which is already done. I bead up through the number 15 holding the fire polished and then I cross through the fire polished one more time. And I bead up through the number 15 and Alice says she has two colors Katie also has two colors browns and brown and turquoise that must be really beautiful I love this combination Katie Sherry uses one color Janice Janice is going with three colors blue purple and gold amazing Jenny. Jenny uses two shades of gunmetal and turquoise rounds. And Ria says, I'm going to work with two colors, but I will make it later. And Sarah says, this one I don't have to sit on to make it flat. Indeed. But there might be a pendant coming next week. So prepare with eating some chocolate and with eating some eating some brownies just in case that the pendant is not completely flat so we can like weigh it down well everyone everyone home, homework for next week eat chocolate okay <laughs> kata hello kata kata is working also with two colors and ryan hilda Works with olive green, copper, and orange. That will be beautiful. The orange and the green together. <laughs> so Maria is laughing. And Sarah says, good. So I hope that everyone will follow my advice and do the homework. I will ask next week if you have eaten enough chocolate. <laughs> you know how a strict teacher I am, right? And 
Donna says, using one color right now, but starting over and bumping up the size of the seed beads and pearls. Too hard for me to see. Donna, if you make it, then please make sure to show us a picture in the club because we are all always looking forward to like seeing variations, what can be altered, what can be changed. As like sometimes we can't get bid deliveries as quick as we expect to, and we have to work with what we have at home. So it's it will be really nice to know if it works out with bigger beads too. Anna. Anna says, two colors seed beads, bronze and white, and four millimeter green jasper stone pearls. That's going to be amazing, Anna. Connie says she has to start over because she doesn't like her colors. Isn't it red and turquoise this time, Connie? You have this classic pair, and I love everything what you do with this, uh, this combination. And Nicolene says she's, uh, she's working with copper, orange, dark blue, and champagne. That will be beautiful too. Lately, I'm getting hooked on orange. I don't know if you remember, I mentioned you that I have phases that I had phases that I kind of liked, started to like every color, but for example, not purple. And then I started to put purple everywhere. And then I had I thought like, okay, now I like everything, but not yellow. And then I really started to work with yellow a lot. And it seems that I'm getting into an orange phase now. Nothing done yet, but I'm putting together some combinations with oranges. So I'm really looking forward to seeing your combination, Nicolin. And Katie says, my kind of diet. You're not alone. <laughs> and Sherry says, never enough chocolate. <gasps> Leslie is with us. Leslie Pope. I'm so happy to see you, Leslie. <laughs> Leslie is one of the designers at Beatsmith, one of the fantastic designers. And uh, together with Leslie Rogalski, they are the ones working the closest with the uh, closest with the Beats Miss Ins Inspiration Squad. And as uh, you probably know, I am also a member of the Beats Miss Inspiration Squad. So when the Beat Miss is coming out with new beads, then uh, the squad members get to uh, design with the new colors or the new shapes. And the Leslie's are the ones who are who are motivating us and making sure that we make something that you will like. <laughs> Oops, and Anne is also not happy with her colors and will start over. That happens. <laughs> And Sharon says, my plan when selecting colors was to mimic the stargazer lilies outside my home office window. Rounds will be magenta to rose. Inside seeds will be cream. And second color will be green. So we'll be using two colors of seed beads. And what a great idea, Sharon. And it shows greatly that uh, perfectly that inspiration can come from from everything, just look out of your window and it's literally there. My, I think one of my funniest moments with like thinking about colors was when I just realized that probably unintentionally I was uh, inspired by the color combination of my microwave and my toaster next to each other. And as a bracelet, they look great. <laughs> Probably because I spend so much time standing next to the coffee machine. And my coffee cup is empty and I was told that I can drink no more coffees today. So that might be why I can't focus so well. So blame Adam. Blame Adam. <laughs> and Connie says she's working with pink and gray. I'm really curious of that. And Colleen has a question. She's asking, when doing step six, 
Why can't you go up three fifteenths and add an 11 and then continue up to the point? Then when you do the second one and on step six, just go through the 11 sticky out bead. That's also possible, actually. Like there are different ways of doing this part. You can add like the delica number 11 delica and then continue through the seed beads. And then when you do another circle, then you just keep the seed bead in the same bead in between. In uh, yeah, the, there is like rarely a situation when it can be done only in one way. So yeah, I always have to choose for one way, but uh, very often it is possible to to do it another way too. And Lynn says, I am much more of a free from peyote person trying this, but just can't get it. Let's do a bead embroidery, a sculptural free form pattern one Friday. Well, sculptural free form pattern, that's something probably you would have to teach, Lynn. I have to admit that free form and sculptural uh, patterns, that's something what I have never done before. I have to be very structural. I, I can't, my brain is just not working with free form. Not yet. Maybe I just have to try. <laughs> and for bead embroidery, have you maybe, have you maybe seen the traveler videos, Lynn? Because we have had a whole series of bead embroidery. I will put the link here for you. And there you can find a whole series of, of bead embroidery videos, also Q&A sessions, ideas, whatever, lots of stuff there. But I'm completely open of doing bead embroidery on Friday, not the free form peyote, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah. What do you think, ladies? Would you like to do bead embroidery one week? And in the meanwhile, Lynn says that she likes oranges and salmons too. And Sarah works with a safe, safe, uh, safe color combination today, blue and steel. That will be really elegant. Sherry has to go. Thanks for joining us today, Sherry. See you later in the club. Yeah, Kata is right, actually. Freeform is not a pattern. Yeah, it would be possible to, for example, like work with the same kinds of beads and then like, let's see what's happening. That everyone would probably end up with something, with something different, but yeah, free form. I just, that's something what I can't get my head around it. <laughs> Nicolin says she has to still finish the traveler. We will ask about it. <laughs> and if you have questions, Nicolin, if you need some advice, then just post your question in the club and I'm happy to help. And I'm pretty sure that there are even more people happy to help and give you advice if you need. And Alice says yes to bead embroidery. Donna says sure. Katie says that it would be fun. Sharon loves bead embroidery. Kata says go for bead embroidery and I see more yes and love. And Lynn says, yes, I have done your traveler and got your turtle and I am who would love both of those. Okay, then we have to fuel the addiction. Embroidery is also my favorite technique, actually. So, yeah, let's go for that. Caroline says that she likes component patterns like this ones. So... Yeah, Carolyn, have you seen some of the older ones? Have you checked out the no one has to be the long side? There are a lot, uh, lots of component beading, uh, component patterns where you can like combine 
something into a bracelet or a pet or a pendant or a necklace or earrings we have done a lot of those during these friday sessions nitty hello nitty says hi ladies managed to wake up and decided to say hi i will watch back later enjoy i hope you are doing fine and see you later nitty and Sue has a good idea. How about a UFO day? I was actually thinking about like, what about a Zoom beading together without like a concrete pattern? And then everyone can bring what we are working on at the moment and just chat and eat chocolate. <laughs> what do you think about that? <sighs> yeah, Sarah also likes the idea for bead embroidery. Maria too. Colleen is asking that how many pearls will it take to make a 7.5 inch bracelet? So my bracelet, well, I calculated if you download the printable file, then I calculated that for about a seven inch bracelet, just a moment, I will open it actually. So I can, I can tell you a little, it was 42, I think. Yeah, around seven inches you need 42. So I would say you are safe with 70, 75 beads, 74 beads. <gasps> Petra says no. <laughs> are you joking or are you serious, Petra? <laughs> Specify, please. <laughs> Ria says, I like and love to bead embroider. And Kata says, my traveler is a UFO. I have a hard time to finish it. Maybe need to start all over again. Or just forget about it for a little while, focus on something else. And then you can return to it later. And then maybe the energy is flowing better. By the way, I have to say, I, I wanted to, to, to show you this, that I mentioned earlier that I actually have not one, but three UFO drawers. Nitty is the, uh, is the, uh, can, can, can tell you that it is actually true because when she was visiting me, I showed her that I actually have three UFO drawers. But since we started to make that no one has to be the long videos, then I am pulling out UFOs. And I am sometimes finishing them or I am sometimes transforming them into something else. So the cobblestone road started about 10 years ago and it looked like this. And instead of the round pearls, I was using fire polished rondels. And instead of the fire polished beads, I was using bicon beads and again two colors of number 15 seed beads and it's just a work in progress thing and I really wanted to do something with it but I couldn't lay my hands on some more of this awesome avocado color rondels so I had to come up with something different and that's how this was born. So UFOs are actually useful <laughs> and Lane said in the meanwhile, yes, for all your pattern beaters, freeze form is very easy using all size of beads. I will be teaching our local bead society free form. They are not free form people too, but trying to break down the wall. And a very big thumbs up for challenging the ladies and teaching them something new. Yeah, and Sarah says, UFO, then I can't join. Those of you who haven't been with us uh, earlier, once when we were talking about UFOs and how many UFOs one has, then Sarah confessed that she doesn't have UFOs because she is just finishing everything she works on. And that's unbelievable. But apparently it's true. There is such a beater on the world. I think there is like one beater in the world who is like that and that's Sarah 
<laughs> and like I'm really like admiring you, Sarah, for being so uh, structural and being so yeah strict with yourself. <laughs> I would love to do that, but I somehow just don't manage. And Nikoli likes the idea of the Zoom and Honey too. And Sharon says yes, yes, yes. And Joanna too. Maria too. And finally, someone supporting uh, someone also having like lots of lots of UFOs. Mariela says, hello Mariela. Love all the ideas, but a UFO day is not enough. So much UFOs laying around. And Zoom, yes. <laughs> 60 in zoom can it be done do you mean like 60 uh, 60 people i actually have a professional account on zoom so i don't think it's limited to 60 leaders i think it's about 100 and usually we are like hundreds or we could say like the first 100 people can sign in Wow, and Lynn says, Zoom is great. We do three times a week with our group. So between your Tuesday and Friday, I can be five days a week. What a dream. Okay. This one, I guess, right? I will try to. So this is the same, exactly the same. But instead of the fire polished beads, I used bicons. That might be an idea to try with the with the pattern we are working on now too. And instead of the round pearls, I was using rondelles. Oh, and Angelica is here. She says, just came to leave some greetings to all of you. Sorry, I had no time to beat with you. We'll get the pattern online. Hi, Angelica, and have fun later. And Joanna says, send you a photo, Sarah. Yes, indeed, I'm, all, I'm totally up for the idea. <laughs> I actually know her address. She's ordering regularly. So, <laughs> Sarah, you might get one of my UFOs with every package of yours from now on. <laughs> And Deb also has only one UFO. I also know Deb's address. <gasps> and Sharon also says that, Sarah, you are not alone. I am the same way. Oh my God. This is a whole new species. <laughs> oh my God, and Lynn. You make me emotional. Lynn says, congrats on the B&B article. I am going to travel 50 miles to get the magazine for your issue. Enjoy reading it very much. And Anne says, I prefer to refer to my UFOs as work in progress. That sounds so much better than I have three work in progress drawers, no UFOs here. <laughs> and Sarah, actually, you don't have to worry because all the UFOs are here with me in Amsterdam and the packages are traveling from Yvette from Slovakia. So there is no chance. <laughs> and Deb says, I love to finish pieces. Me too. I, I also love to finish pieces. It's just I always have to start five new because before I would be able to finish one of the old ones. <laughs> Connie says, I wish I could buy B and B here. I also don't have an issue, by the way. <laughs> Not yet. <sighs> And Katie says, I took a bunch apart that I knew I would never finish. Yeah, indeed, if it, and especially if there are some nice beads in it, then sometimes we just have to admit that we will not finish that. And it's actually, I think it's a success when we say, say that and we use the beads in a, for another project. 
And Donna says, I have a bunch of UFOs, but a good portion of them just needs to be taken apart. So, ladies, shall we move over to the storytelling beading club to show each other our work in progress pieces? I am pretty sure that everyone has about like 10 times as much as I have managed to finish. <laughs> This is, I think, the smallest piece of beadwork I have managed to done during a no one has to be the long video. But I will, I will blame it on the camera, okay? <laughs> so, please let me know if you have any questions left. And if not, then let's move over to the club and let's show each other that how are we doing with the with the with the bracelets if we have some finished ones already kata i am thinking about you of course <laughs> or sarah <laughs> or how is it going and alice says i have ufos in every craft i do mary ellen hello mary ellen says just joining and we'll download the pattern later missed you all last week I missed you too. So, if you ladies don't have more questions, then I would just like to remind you of our contest, most importantly. There are still some days to enter. You can also enter with the No One Has To Be The One project. Also with the bracelet we, were, uh, we have been working on today. You can you can uh, learn more about it on at the storytellingjeweler.com. And if you have a moment, then please leave a comment at our sponsors' social media pages, Matubo Beads and Beat and Button Magazine. And if you are in the mood of some uh, for some bead embroidery then I would like to recommend our art quality cabochons from L2 Studio, which are still available during this weekend with a 15% discount, also at the storytellingjeweler.com. So thank you very much, ladies, for joining me today. Thank you for all the fun. And see you in the club. I am looking forward to seeing your beautiful color combinations. Have a great weekend and let's see each other next Tuesday during Coffee Time with Erica and we will be talking about the Beat and Mag Button magazine and the show. So if you have any special memories or pictures of projects which you have completed there or pictures of friends together whom you got to know at the show or you just fondly remember an issue of the magazine, then you can bring it to the to coffee time and we can share it with each other. So wishing you all a beautiful weekend and see you next week. Thank you very much for watching and meeting with me. Bye bye. <laughs>